Hi, I'm Dr. Kavita Lakshmi Ishwaran and then I'm an MD in obstetrics and gynecology and I'm a senior consultant obstetrician in Motherhood Hospital, HRBR. Like I mentioned before, uh, the patient needs to be booked in a specialized hospital, especially with uh, all the backup for, uh, you know, dealing with a high-risk pregnancy. In terms of having a physician who is uh, having a rich experience with dealing with a high-risk pregnancy or an interventionist uh, who will help us, uh, uh, you know, carry on the pregnancy uh, in a smoother manner. And also a well-trained anesthetist who would help us deal with uh, you know, pregnancy related uh, complications when it comes to a caesarean section. The second most important thing is there might be an increased requirement for extra medications uh, than the usual norms of iron, calcium and maybe a protein powder. For example, in gestational diabetes you might require to add hypoglycemates like uh, metformin or uh, insulin or uh, we might require, um, you know, other than the diet that we might uh, uh, prescribe. Or we might require extra medications to mitigate the effects of either the disease or the medicine that we are using to treat the high-risk pregnancy. For example, you know, uh, in pregnancy-induced hypertension, uh, there might be a growth lag to the baby. So we might have to supplement it with amino acids or we might have to add other uh, medications so that a growth lag or uh, you know a drop, drop in the liquor doesn't happen like a low dose aspirin or a low molecular weight heparin. So that, that those would be simple examples for that and the patient may, might require more surveillance in terms of uh, more frequent scans to make sure that the baby is growing well or there are no other associated uh, maternal complications uh, during the process of pregnancy. And there might be more frequent blood tests that might be required, especially in gestational diabetes or other conditions to monitor and maintain the uh, high-risk pregnancy to a near normal one. The fourth important thing would be to anticipate a preterm delivery, which might be uh, might have to be artificially induced in cases where the maternal complications are not getting controlled and it might be harmful to the baby at, at a particular point where the baby is not able to cope and the growth is lagging or there are Doppler changes in the baby. So more frequent, you know, sometimes, you know, interventions uh, come towards a preterm birth, but the aim would always be to take the baby to term. And uh, sometimes, you know, complications in the mother could uh, cause a more frequent uh, incidence of uh, preterm delivery, especially when there are uterine anomalies uh, complicating towards uh, or a cervical incompetence complicating uh, the high risk pregnancy. In all, uh, in a nutshell, in a summary, a very healthy diet prescribed, an appropriate diet in terms of uh, changes in the diet when it comes to gestational diabetes, the patient has to be put on a diabetic diet and a high protein diet. And when it comes to hypertension, we might have to put the baby, patient on, the, on a uh, salt restricted diet. And all with an aim of an appropriate or an adequate weight gain. So the weight gain should be slow and in moderation so that, you know, there is no excessive weight gain during the course of pregnancy. Now an excessive weight gain has to be taken with a pinch of salt because we need to look into whether there is an early onset of or an onset of gestational diabetes or pregnancy induced hypertension. The other changes that needs to be done is uh, exercise whenever required um, and bed rest whenever not required. These are other changes that needs to be done during the course of handling high-risk pregnancy.